one DJ here. Today we're going to discuss the Notice of Eligibility for Retired Pay, or 20-Year Letter as it's sometimes called. This won't be as good a video as the last one I recorded, and by that I mean the last version of this episode because somebody forgot to turn on his microphone and the entire video had no sound at all. So here we go with round two. Hopefully it turns out all right. This will be a fairly simple topic because I think many people already understand the concept of the 20 year letter. So this won't be a long episode at all. The notice of eligibility is generated by your branch of service. Please keep that in mind. And, it's, uh, and it only happens once you've completed 20 years of qualifying service. As you may recall, uh, a qualifying year has at least 50 retirement points accrued during that year. As a side note, it is possible to get one of these letters before completing 20 years of service, but I'm going to cover that in a future episode, not this one. In one of my previous episodes, The Basics of Reserve Retirement, I included a lot more information about what's a qualifying year for retirement and things of that nature. I think it would be good to review that episode and I'll put a link to that YouTube episode in my show notes. Back to 20 year letter. Uh, please remember that the number of years of service for pay, as in what shows on your leave and earning statement, may not be the same as the number of qualifying years for retirement. I'm often contacted by service members who confuse those two numbers. Please try to keep that straight in your head. In order to know what your true number of qualifying years happens to be, please check your retirement point statement. And if you think there's a problem with it, uh, there are ways to correct it. We'll get into that in a future episode as well. Anyway, once you've completed your 20th qualifying year, you will receive a notice of, eligib of eligibility from your branch of service. Please be patient with them and don't expect that letter to appear the day you complete your qualifying year, your 20th year. As some of the calls I get seem to indicate people expect. Uh, your branch of service is allowed a, up to a full year to produce that letter. It normally won't take that long, but you know, don't be surprised if it takes a month or two at a minimum. Often, if you ask, politely by the way, they may produce it on a slightly faster schedule. However, do not ask them to produce a letter on the expectation that you'll complete 20 years. You have to do your part first and then they'll do theirs. So, what does this letter mean? Why is it such a big deal? This letter, this 20-year letter, this notice of eligibility, verifies that you have completed the minimum amount of service required in order to be eligible for retired pay once you reach a certain age. This age is usually 60 for most reservists, but it can be reduced under certain circumstances. Yet again, that's something I'll cover in a future episode. Once you are within nine months of your eligibility age, you can apply for retired pay. Notice I said apply. This is not something that's automatic. Some people seem to have that in their heads. Please wash that out of your mind. And remember, you do have to apply. This letter is important because it has to, or a copy of it, has to be included with your application packet, otherwise it will be rejected because they'll say you're not eligible. And by they, I mean your branch of service. So there alone you should see the value of this letter and why you should treat it like gold and protect it. Keep it in a safe place so you know where to find it when the time comes around. Here are a few other things to keep in mind. Once you receive your notice of eligibility, you have 90 days from that date of receipt. Not the date the letter was published, but the date you got it, to make an election for the Reserve Component Survivor Benefit Plan. This plan, 
RCSBP, as you'll sometimes hear it called, is the only way you can pass on part of your retirement to a family member. I'll give you more details about this plan in a future episode as well. If you don't make an election within that 90-day period, an election will be made for you by your branch of service. This can be, you know, kind of dangerous because it's based on the information available from your personnel record at the time. So right there is an implied task. Keep your records updated. Or even better, or maybe I should say as well, keep your records updated and make the election yourself. When it comes to estate planning, it's always better to have something with your signature rather than a form letter from someone like me at your branch of service producing a generic letter for you. Also keep in mind that if you, let's just say you're married, if you give your unit a copy of your marriage certificate and they drop it in your local personnel file, don't assume everything is updated. Most branches of service, if not all these days, use electronic personnel records. So just because you gave it to it being the marriage certificate or whatever you're adding, just because you gave it to a full-timer in your unit or dropped it in a record in a file cabinet doesn't mean everything is done. It does not mean that your records are properly updated. So make sure all the T's are crossed in that regard. Also, receiving a notice of eligibility means you have another choice to make. Will you stay in the service or not? If you choose to stay in the service, the law requires that you continue to earn at least 50 points per retirement year, or if you don't, the branch of service may either separate you from service completely or transfer you to the retired reserve. It's better to avoid that risk, of course. For example, I have a neighbor who did not maintain 50 points a year and was separated completely. This will have a negative impact on him later unless he can successfully get that changed. In fact, here's what's going to happen. If you choose to leave service, you have the option of either complete separation, which is a bad idea, or to transfer to the retired reserve. Now, different branches use a different term for a retired reserve. Uh, that's, this is the term used in federal law and most commonly across the services, so it's the one I'm going to use. However, if you completely separate, you lose many of the benefits you've already earned as well as all the cost of living increases to your pay scale from the day you separate until the day you're eligible for pay. This means you've lost a lot of money that you'll never get back. If you transfer to the retired reserve, however, you retain all those COLAs and all the other benefits that you've earned. Believe it or not, that's it. Hopefully this was a dis an understandable description of the 20-year letter and what's expected of you once you get it. There are several topics I mentioned in passing, which I will explain further in future episodes, so I ask that you come back next week and in weeks uh, to follow in order to see those future installments. Thank you for joining me. Have a good day. If you liked what you heard on today's video, then please go below and give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to this channel. Also, please let other people know about this channel and the information it can provide for them. If you have questions or comments, then please have no qualms about posting them in the comments section below. Please remember the RC Retirement YouTube channel and the RCRetirement.com website are not recognized or endorsed by the Department of Defense, the Department of Veterans Affairs, or any other government agency. The information presented in these resources are for informational and entertainment purposes only. Also, the content of either of these resources should not be considered financial or legal advice. Please consult with your own legal counsel or financial planner before making any decisions based on what you have learned here. 
As always, thank you for watching the RC Retirement YouTube channel.